99.7% of viewers of this channel are not subscribed. Please consider subscribing, it's free and takes no time at all. Also, check out my socials in the description. Roll the intro. Welcome to Project Python. This is a series where I, a coding enthusiast, take on several coding challenges to challenge my coding skills and along the way explain my learnings. Each episode focuses on a different problem and that's about it. So without wasting any time, let's get into this episode of Project Python. Today's challenge is the leak code problem container with most water. The input is a list of integers and the output must be an integer. The problem is as follows. We are given an integer array called heights of length n. Each element in this list denotes the height of a bar in a bar graph and the element's index number is where it is positioned on the x-axis. We can assume that the list will have two or more elements and each element in this list will be greater than or equal to zero. So for example, if this is the list we were given and therefore these would be the index numbers, this would be the bar graph we would get. The second bar is positioned on x equals to 1 because the index number is 1 and it is 6 units tall since the value of the element is 6. To make this general, the two endpoints of any bar are i, 0 and i, the ith term of the list height, where i is the index number of the element. So with that established, we are asked to find two such lines that along with the x-axis form a container with the largest area. The maximum area that we find is what we need to output. For this example, the maximum area would be 42, formed by these two lines in the x-axis. Keep in mind that you are not allowed to slant the container. As we can see here, although the right side of the container is longer, the area is limited by the shorter left side. Imagine as though you were filling this container up with water. Any water added after this point would simply flow over. At this point, I encourage you to pause the video and try solving this problem yourself. So, how do we go about solving this? What would be the brute force algorithm? By brute force, I mean without worrying about performance, how can we solve this problem? Well, we could simply calculate the area for every possible pair of lines and find out the maximum area. The brute force algorithm would consist of two for loops. The use of these for loops would be to check the area formed by the container of each element with every other element in the list. Although this works, this isn't very performant and we need to come up with a more efficient approach. The approach we will take a look at now is called a two pointer approach and we will shortly see why. Let's start by considering what factors we look at when calculating the area of a container. The area is simply the length times the height. So the maximum height we could possibly get is if the first and last elements of our list heights were the maximum values because we would have the maximum height and the maximum length. But we don't know which two lines form the maximum height when we start. What we do know is that the maximum possible length of the container would be the distance between the two ends of the list. So let's start with that. Let's go back to our previous example and set up two pointers, one at the beginning of our list and one at the end. The area we get is eight because the length is eight and the height is one. Remember that although 7 is larger than 1, the effective height of the container is 1, since any water above this level will fall over. We will keep a record of the maximum area we find as we go. At this stage, how can we maximize the area of the container? We know that we will have to move either of the two pointers. Regardless of which one we choose, the length of our container will reduce by 1. Therefore, we want to move a pointer such that the height of the container increases so that we have a chance of getting a greater area. Well, seven is much bigger than one. So we want to keep seven as is and we want to change one. Take a step back and think why. The reason we move the pointer pointing at one is because the only chance we get at a larger container is if we increase the height of the shorter side of the container because the shorter side is limiting the height and therefore also the area. It is important to note that moving the pointer might not get us a value greater than 1, but the whole point is that we want to change the side of the container limiting the area, as it could overcome the reduction in area due to the length decreasing by potentially giving us a longer line. With that established, let's move our left pointer up by 1. 
At this stage, the length is 7 and the height is 6, making our area 42. And this is the greatest area we have found thus far. Now 6 is less than 7, so let's increment our left pointer. At this stage, the length is 6 and the height is 7, making our area 42. This is again the greatest area we have found thus far. Here, 8 is greater than 7, so let's decrease our right pointer. At this stage, the length is 5 and the height is 3, making our area 50. This is not greater than the max area we have found. We repeat this process until our pointers point at the same index, because at that point we will have covered all the combinations that could possibly give us the maximum area. We will find that the maximum area possible in this case is 42, and there we have our answer. Let's generalize this approach. We start with two pointers pointing at the beginning and the end of our list. Then we calculate the area using the distance between the two pointers and the lowest of the two values that our pointers point at. We update our maximum area if the area calculated is greater than its current value. If the value of the element which the left pointer is pointing at is less than the one that the right pointer is pointing at, we increment the left pointer, or else we decrease the right pointer. We repeat all the previous steps while the left pointer's position is less than the right pointer's position. Two more functions that we need to be aware of before we can move on are the max and min functions. Both functions take in the same input which looks like this. Here a, b, c and so on are all the same type of data. This can be integers, strings, etc. But the important thing is all elements should be of the same type. The key is a function where the iterables are passed and comparison is performed. And the default value is the value to be returned if the given iterable is empty. It is important to note that the key and default arguments are optional. The max function returns the maximum of all the arguments, and the min function returns the minimum of all the arguments. So for this list, calling min and max would return 8 and 1 respectively. Now that we have our algorithm, let's start coding. We will start by defining our function using the DEF keyword followed by the name of the function, which in this case I will be calling max area. This function takes one argument and that is a list of integers called heights. Our first step is to create our pointers. A pointer is simply a variable that holds an integer which corresponds to an index of our list. Let's create our left pointer and give it the value 0. Remember that the first element in a list has the index 0. Similarly, let's create our right pointer and set it equal to the length of our list heights minus 1. This would be the index of the last element in the list. Finally, let's create a variable that will hold the maximum area and set this to 0. Since we know that none of the elements can be less than 0, this is the minimum area that we can get. Now we need to create a while loop that runs as long as our left pointer is less than our right pointer. Remember, when this condition becomes false, we have covered all possible combinations for the maximum area. Within this while loop, we first want to calculate the area with the pointers we have. So let's create a variable called area, and that will be equal to the distance between the two pointers, which can be found by taking that difference. This difference is the length of the container. We want to multiply this by the lowest of the two values our pointers point at. Here we can use the min function and pass in the elements our pointers point at to get the minimum of the two values. To get an element that a pointer is pointing at, all we have to do is write the name of the list followed by square parentheses with the value of the pointer inside. This works because the pointer simply holds an index which can be used to access an element in our list. Now that we have our area, we want to check if this is greater than max area and update max area if it's greater. We can do all of this using the max function by simply setting the max area equal to the max of the current value of max area and the area that we just calculated. If the area we just calculated is greater than max area, then it will become the new value of max area. If not, then the max function will return max area, which will keep its value the same. Now we need to change one of our pointers. To do this, all we need to check is if the value one is pointing at is less than what the other is pointing at. We can check if the element that the left pointer points at is less than the one that the right pointer points at using an if statement like so. If this condition is true, we want to increment our left pointer and so we can use the shorthand syntax to increase our left pointer by one. 
If this is not true, we want to decrease our right pointer. So let's write this else statement and within the else block, decrease our right pointer by one using the shorthand syntax. Remember that we want to decrease our right pointer because it starts at the end of the list and we want it to move towards the start. This is all we need to do in our while loop, at the end of which we can simply return max area. And this completes our code. All we need to do now is call this function with a few different values and test that it works. As you can see, our function works. And this brings us to the end of our video. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Leave in the comments below any suggestions, feedback, and or ideas for future challenges. And I will see you in the next episode of Project Python.